Welcome back everyone to video number two in our Let's Play series of Clockwork Empires. From our first video, remember that we were we had constructed a couple of buildings, one for our citizens to sleep in, and then another one, which is for our carpenter. So it looks like, let's see, first and foremost, let's take care of these walls and get these out of the way. So things are moving along. We've got our stockpiles over here that are quickly filling up. Uh, first things first, uh, we've got a few things we want to do for the carpenter. We want to get some things uh, built here, but we need to start building uh, a crop field. And before we can do that, I'm going to go ahead and build it over here. And let's go ahead and clear the area around here. And that will enable us to build later on. Okay, let's go ahead and see what kind of assignments we have going on. We've got foraging that has been paused. And we've got some mining going on and then clearing terrain, which will begin. Uh, before we get too much further, let's go take a look and see that we have one worker that is currently unassigned. Okay, so we've got one worker working in carpentry other than the overseer. And so let's go ahead and add one here so we can mine those surface nodes and get that taken care of a little bit quicker. Okay, now let's, with that out of the way, we're going to actually build our mine or excuse me, not the mine, but the uh, crop field over here. And you can see it already has space set out for it, uh, for a particular size, and we're gonna put it down right there. Okay, and we'll give that a minute. Let's go ahead and speed up time a little bit. But back to our uh, carpenter here. If you remember from the first video, we couldn't place down everything we wanted to because we had people sleeping on the floor. Well, that's gone now. Uh, for the most part and we need to get some things going we're, we're going to need tons of planks because that's what you use to make your buildings so we're going to go ahead and take care of that let's make some planks but instead of him just making a single plank i'm going to switch this order type and have him maintain a minimum of a certain number and i'm going to make that number 10 so that we always have plenty now with him underway working on that or she as the case may be Let's go ahead and look at some other modules. Remember, modules are simply the different furniture and, and various items that make up the inside of your building, your various workbenches uh, primarily. So we're gonna need an assembly workbench here. So I'm gonna go ahead and place another one of these. And then our carpenter will need to make one of these. And then the other thing we're gonna need is I want another carpentry workbench. We already have one. But the way this game seems to work, and this is the part of the game I'm not particularly thrilled about, is that rather than just having one workbench and you can order up uh, as many different things in the queue as you'd like, it seems like you can only have one particular order in each of these workbenches at any given time. So now you can see we have three workbenches in here. And this one's not built yet, so we're going to actually have to make that one. And the way we do that is to select our second carpentry workbench, and here's the assembly workbench. So we'll make that, and it'll come out looking like a crate. It will come out looking like the cots will. All of these will be modules, and they'll, they'll come out looking like crates, and then one of our workers will take the crates and use that to actually place our item. So we've got various things being mined. Looks like we actually got a little chunk of, looks like that might be gold right there. Okay, and here's the crate. And one of our workers comes in, and here we are. So now we have, if we click on our workshop, you can see the three workbenches that we have. Now, this particular workbench makes different items. And one of the items you can see it makes are cots. It makes different types of workbenches, as well as a couple of different types of beds, and so on. Okay, for this particular purposes, we're going to make some cots. And change this to always have a minimum of three cots around. So they'll go ahead and get started working there. Now, Tailingston, our overseer, let's see, do they have anybody assigned to them? Yes, they do. We have one worker assigned there. So you can have up to one worker at each workstation. So right now we can have up to three workers working in carpentry at any given time. 
All right, so carpentry is up and moving along. Here, you can see we've cleared the area for the most part. Now we need to assign an overseer here, somebody hopefully that is good at farming. And let's see if we have anybody with farming skill. All right, science, that's a skill that's not really all that good. Oh, there's a farmer. So we've got a two in farming skill here. So gear irons is going to be, let's see, let's make sure before I choose them that gear iron isn't already doing something. Okay, so no, we're fine there. I wanted to make sure that gear iron wasn't our carpenter because I don't remember everybody's name. Okay. So let's go ahead, assign Overseer, and come down to Gear Iron. And that will assign them. So Gear Irons, do they have any workers assigned to them? Yes, they do. One additional worker. So we're in good shape there. All right, excellent. Things are, are moving along. So they're going to go ahead and get started working the ground here and planting. Now, along with that is we're going to have additional needs for cooking. So before we start into that, let's take a look at our commodities and let's turn off the filter for all. Only show me the raw goods, which for now I'm looking for logs and stone. You can see we have several logs and a whole bunch of stone. So we're in good shape there because that's what we're going to need to get our building done. Uh, logs turned into planks and then our rough stone as well. Okay, and let's go ahead and close all of these. The tutorial, a lot of this we're already doing on our own. Okay, so we've got three cots that have been placed down. So we're in good shape there. Okay, looks like we're clearing some land. Let's see what kind of assignments are being worked on. Let's go ahead and unpause this foraging. So they'll go get that because we'll use that for food. We've got some mining going on. They're going to be constructing the building, which is this area, our sleeping area, and then working in the carpentry shop as well. It looks like whenever they don't have anything else going on. All right. The question mark here tells me that this particular workbench doesn't have any orders right now. So let's see what we might be able to use here. I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and have them make do I want to make mine shorings just yet? I don't think so. Let's make some paper stacks. Okay, let's have, let's make two paper stacks. And that's going to take quite a bit of planks to do that. And, but that's okay. I'll tell you what, no, it's not okay. I just remembered we're going to need that to do some more building. We've got, we've got a cot here that's been laid down on the ground. A couple of more cots here. So, our workers are not going to make any more cots in here because they've already got three. And now we just need to take these and put them in here. I found that this is a little bit buggy, though. They'll take the cots. You can clearly see we have three cots that are ready to be placed, but they're not placing them. I'm not sure if maybe you're limited to three cots uh, per each building or what the deal is, but hopefully we'll be able to figure that out as we move forward. For now, I'm not going to worry too terribly much about it. Uh, but what I do want is let's make sure we have plenty of trees being chopped. All right, we got some trees down here. Let's make sure they get these chopped. These do regrow, although I'm not sure exactly how long it's going to take for them to regrow. All right, and we are filling up quickly over here in our storage area. So let's go ahead and make a couple of more stockpiles and let's in fact let's make one right over here next to our farm so our farmers don't have to go very far to put down their goods okay with that in mind let's go ahead and mine these surface nodes around and we're going to want to flatten some more terrain as well and let's take a look at what we can do with that zones and flatten terrain looks like we've got plenty of terrain out here okay so we're in good shape with terrain uh, ultimately i do want to flatten some of this that looks to be too far gone for me to actually do much there but now that i realize we've got all of this land as well as all of this out here so i think we're in good shape for now 
let's go ahead and queue up another building and let's make this building a kitchen. Okay, we're going to place our kitchen right here next to our carpenter and we're going to make this a little bit smaller. Again, not sure exactly how big we're going to need it, but you can see all of the items that you could potentially have in here and that's going to be a huge building, I would think, if you have all of these in there. So these are going to be farther down the line because they require metal work. So I know right now I'm going to place two of these in the building. And if I click on the building right now, you can see it's under construction. And here are all the tasks that need to take care of. We're going to need a couple of modules, which are these. And so let's take care of seeing what those are. That is a stone oven. And it looks like, let's make sure that we actually, okay, we're not going to make it using this workbench. Let's see if maybe we use this workbench. And I don't see it. So it looks like we just need the raw materials to take care of that. Okay, so we'll leave that be for now. And as you can see, they're already working on that. Okay, so let's go ahead back to our modules and we're gonna need a door. And it's very easy to forget the door. I do it a lot. But if you don't have a door, then they can't very well get in and out of the building. So we've got somebody here taking care of things. And now they are, oh, okay, they were building the building itself, not the actual uh, oven that we had placed down. All right, so things are moving along. Oh, we've got our first first items here. Excellent. So they're going to use up this area pretty quick, it looks like, as well as the miner that's working in the area. All right. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to place down a couple of more stockpiles right here because I don't want to run out of those and I want to keep them. So as we continue expanding our fields in hopefully this general area, we'll have plenty of room uh, for storage. Okay, because as you can see, we're getting really stocked up over here. Now we've run into what may be a glitch uh, or maybe I'm doing something wrong. We've got, you can see we had our worker do, oops, wrong one. We had our worker to maintain a minimum of three cots at all times. Well, he's done that. We have, I see two cots, and it seemed like I saw a third one around just a second ago somewhere. Let's rotate the world a little bit and see if I see the third one. No, I must have missed it, but you can see the cots are sitting here, but nobody is bringing these to place, so I'm not sure if maybe this particular type of building, which is a housing for our laborers, Maybe it's limited to only three in any one building. So maybe I've wasted space here. Uh, we'll have to see as we move on. Uh, but for now, I do want to queue up another building. Oh, looks like our cook is ready to go. So as you can see, we've got our two ovens that we've located in here. They're ready to go. We need an overseer, somebody that is good at cooking. We see, there we go, cooking right here, level two. So we're going to assign them. Do they have any additional workers? No, they do not. And that's good. That's that's fine because it seems to me that that shouldn't be much of an issue. If we see that it is an issue, we'll definitely add more. And as everybody heads to sleep, we'll take a look at the different types of food that we can have. Now, at the top, we've, we were collecting the fungus. We can turn that into stew and that will be good for our laborers. Also good for the laborers is maize chowder. And I'm gonna choose that one. And then I'm gonna change the order type and have them maintain 10 of those at all times. They may or may not have everything they need for that, but we're gonna go ahead and place the order. And our other oven, where I'm gonna make farmer stew, which is preferred by overseers. So this hopefully will increase the happiness of our overseers. And let's go ahead and have them try to make 10 of that as well. So the better the food we can have, the more happy happiness we'll have in our settlement. So 
Kitchen is up and going. Carpenter is up and going. We've got hopefully plenty of storage space with our stockpiles around. And now we need to work on another building. But first, I want to see how we're doing on materials. We've got 77 stone and 46 logs. Okay, so we're good. And looks like we've got somebody who is enraged. Definitely not good. And he is enraged. And they are enraged. Why? Slept well. Feels recklessly in danger. Okay. That's what we're actually going to take care of next. The reason they feel endangered uh, is partly because I believe we do not have currently any military presence. So here I'm going to maintain a barracks. And where do I want to put the barracks? Actually, let's put it right Let's put it right there. Again, the size I'm making these buildings, unfortunately, is just sort of haphazard. Uh, I'm hoping to leave a little room for further expansion uh, as we progress into the game, but I have no idea how much of that I'm going to need. So we're going to have them start working on that. And while I'm thinking about it, let's go ahead and put a door here. My hope is to flatten out some of this area as we move forward, but we'll see how that goes. Now, here inside of this building if we come to where is it the barracks right here we can have an improvised musket locker uh, but again we haven't done that quite yet uh, because that will use up our ammo we don't have anybody making ammunition just now so we've got a door and that's going to have to do for now okay so they'll we click on the building and we can see there's some different tasks that need to be completed in order to get that up and running, then we'll be able to assign an overseer there and hopefully at least one other worker. Let's take a look at our, our workers. We have three unassigned workers. That is excellent because I am going to go ahead and assign, let's see, carpentry. We're good on carpentry. We have an overseer and one additional worker, so we're fine there. And what else do we need? I am actually going to go ahead and start building some other housing. Uh, I'm, I'm a little concerned about this glitch that or glitch or something I did wrong. Oops, we need housing. And let's go ahead and make uh, some more bunk housing. And that, I believe, will be big enough to fit three. I'm going to limit what we are building to three. Okay, so we've got our barracks. We've just been signaled that our barracks is done. So we can assign an overseer there. And let's see if we have anybody that's good at the art of war. And I'm not seeing anything. Of course, gear irons, we already know, is busy. Okay, let's make, let's make biscuit. I like the name. Let's go ahead and see what, uh, remember we have three unassigned workers. So let's find Biscuit. There we go. And let's go ahead and give him one worker. That will give us two uh, military presence. And let's go ahead and for now, let's just sort of, let's take care of the rest of these workers and even those out. Now let's head back up to our building and we're gonna need some modules in our building. One of which, is a door which we're going to put right there and then we're going to put some more cots and we're going to put a cot one up against the wall and then we're going to space a couple more out in here so i'm going to keep it to a maximum of three i'm not sure about that we may have wasted a lot of area and boy that's when you know it's been a long day let's go ahead and zoom in here that is tired when you are when you are tired enough that you just lay down and that is at some serious tired right there <laughs> all right so we've gotten that taken care of and i already see some cots waiting so hopefully they'll take care of that and just as i say that here he goes so this may indeed be a glitch i may have messed up and made this building too big so we i see our three cots ready to be put in place 
And hopefully that'll increase the happiness because, you know, nobody wants to sleep on the ground or <laughs> sleep on the hard floor. So they're installing these cots and that should increase the happiness at least a little bit. So that'll give us a total of six cots. And as a matter of fact, let's take a look right quick as we're running low on time for this particular video. We're still good, doing good on logs and stone. So let's continue to build. I'm going to go ahead and build another house, laborer bunk house, and we're going to make this one, oops, we're going to make this one hopefully about the same size. And yeah, it looks like we should be able to fit three in there. And we're going to go ahead and add our door to the front, and let's get some cots in here. We're going to start our first cot right up against the wall and then fit a few more along the way as well. So we've gotten food is up and running. We have a cook to take care of the food. They will eat the raw food, the, the raw corn or maize uh, or fungus. They will do that, but they don't want to. They would prefer and, and their happiness would be much more if we have better food, some more processed food and better higher quality food. So We've got that going as well. Okay, so corn is growing there. We're getting more housing built. Pretty soon we'll have a new type of housing uh, for overseers that will be opened up and they will require higher quality bedding as well. All right, cots are going in place. All right, so things are going well. Let's check back in on our carpenter. They're making plates, uh, planks and maintaining cots. And let's see if there's anything else we need here. Let's have them. We're going to need paper here fairly soon, but we're not worried about that yet. we got some building to do before we worry too much about that. Okay, let's take a look at our overseers. We've got one in the kitchen, no assignment here. Carpenter, no assignment. we got barracks and then no assignment. The ones that are showing no assignment are the ones that will fulfill the assignments that we have, such as... Oh, we've got a burial. So somebody died. That may have been that poor lady right here that I was making fun of earlier for being extremely tired. So apparently she was extremely tired. Let's go ahead and designate an area for a graveyard. And that is a huge area. And we want to, do we even have room for this right now? Wow. That is going to be huge. And I'm going to place it right here which is a huge area, not anything I wanted to do, of course, uh, particularly this early on. But unfortunately, it is part of the game. And while I'm thinking about it, I do want to have one more uh, farmer here. So let's go ahead and build another crop field and we'll make this maze and I'm going to put this right here. So it's going to be close by. I want to keep all of our food production close by. And so we've got three assignments. You can see working in the kitchen, constructing a building. So we've got that going on. So things seem to be going well. But one thing I have learned from my short amount of time in this game is that that can turn very quickly. As you see, things can go very bad. Now, it looks like we've got some new immigrants that have arrived. Let's take a look in our menu here and see we have five new workers and I believe a new overseer. Yes, so we've got a new overseer that has arrived. That is excellent. And while I'm thinking about it, go ahead and cut. I noticed some trees there. Let's go ahead and cut that. And here we need to assign a new overseer. All right, let's see if we have anybody else with farming. What about our new guy? He is good at smithing. So farmer, barracks, and it doesn't look like we're going to be that lucky. So, okay, no problem. We'll just have to start out. We don't want to do this because uh, a porridge is good at naturalism, and that's we're going to need that very soon. So we're going to go ahead and Fladgate. Love the names in this thing. Fladgate, do you have anybody assigned to you? Uh, yes, you do. You have one already assigned. We've got five workers. I'm going to go ahead and make sure everybody has at least one barracks. I'm going to add an additional, so we'll have a total of three military 
that hopefully we won't need, but you just never know. All right, we're going to assign an additional worker in the kitchen, and then farming. I think two is plenty there for farming, and we're going to go ahead and assign our final worker for the miscellaneous tasks, such as chopping the wood and various things like that. All right, let's take a look, and we're, again, we're, run, we're running low on time, and I hate to cut off the video because I'm just having so much fun and, and things are, are happening, but it looks like we're going to have to stop here, and we'll continue on next time. We're going to want to get a naturalist and so that we can expand and eventually start mining and attracting more settlers, so we'll continue building. So stay tuned for more Clockwork Empires.